Welcome to Health Beat, BKCSA's monthly television program that takes an in-depth look at health issues. I'm Mia Malan. With electricity cuts now an ever-present reality, this edition looks at the mental health impact of load shedding. How does having no power for extended periods affect our state of mind? To find out, the South African Depression and Anxiety Group tells us about their latest research. We will also speak to psychologist Tolin Hlangla Dlamini Ngoya about her observations. But first, let's find out how the load shedding blues are affecting people in rural areas. Producers Mahali Malloy and Yolanda Mitzeki travelled southeast of Johannesburg, where some food producers are taking serious strain. I'm seeing my dreams, you know, and the vision that we've had, having to just go on hold. Bayanda Maseko used to have a thriving chicken farm near Nigel in Gauteng. And it, it totally failed. It totally failed. Rolling energy blackouts have brought his farming operation to its knees. We put in 2,000 um, chicks. Uh, the day we put them in, electricity gone, and it went for about three days. Chickens are delicate animals. Without consistent temperature and flow of fresh water, they can't survive. I've buried just over 2,000 chickens that uh, we started operating with. We were trying to expand our operation, and um, we were robbed from you know, establishing that and actually growing it. The loss has knocked down his dreams of growing the business. Um, in December, we were supposed to establish our first butchery um, in town to be able to make it more effective for people to, to access our, our products. And uh, we had to put that on hold because of the load shedding. Sorry, guys, it's been long, eh? It's been long, it's been long. Today, only three chickens remain. So our livelihoods are affected, our business is affected, and it becomes a really traumatic experience where you don't know where to go else to find help. Emergency measures like generators just aren't enough on a farm. I'm sitting right now, we're 24 hours without electricity. And if you have run out, for 24 hours without electricity, even a generator cannot run for that long. It's a situation many farmers find themselves in. All they can do is console each other. At the end of the day, you go back and sit in your office and think and, and, and cry over some stuff and plan again um, for the next day. But uh, help is not, I don't think the help is, is sufficient to, to to, to heal you and to get to start again. It's, 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 it's every man for himself when it comes to farming. It's with the help of his family that he's found ways to farm with less electricity. <laughs> so we have actually um, downgraded on um, the broiler production and we are moving on to maximizing more on, on our livestock. He says, although farmers are trying to feed the nation, there's just no support. Any farmer that goes through such will definitely be affected. And I think it's, 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 it's a conversation that we need to have, you know, with farmers. Um, we need to talk to somebody, someone needs to talk, because you, at, at that point, you are not aware that your mind has been affected. Bayanda finds it hard to be optimistic. All he can do is hang on to hope and a prayer. I don't know where we're heading, but, um, it feels, I feel like we're heading to a disaster unless, um, you know, someone saves us. It's, it's a very difficult situation. Um, I fear for uh, young businesses, young farmers. I fear for my family, for my little children that are growing up, you know, in this generation. And I don't know what the future um, holds for them.
That uncertainty is felt by many South Africans who are unsure about what the future holds with no end in sight to the electricity crisis. With me to discuss the impact of load shedding on us is Cassie Chambers from SADAC. Cassie, thanks very much for making the time to join us today. SADAC recently asked South Africans to participate in a survey called My Life During Load Shedding. What prompted you to do that survey? Thank you, Mia. Um, we were receiving so many calls from people who were really frustrated, talking about their increased anxiety levels around load shedding. And we really wanted to understand as a charity group, what can we do and how can we support South Africans better with their mental health during load shedding? So we did an online survey um, and we sent it out through all of our online channels and received over 1,800 people that responded to share how load shedding had impacted their mental wellness. So what kind of questions did you ask them? We were asking questions just on how they were coping, um, what parts of their mental wellness from frustrations to anxieties that they were experiencing during that time, but also wanting to understand what were they thinking about the perceived load shedding? What was the outcomes that they were seeing? So if you look at your results, what does the data say? What did you find? Definitely higher levels of anxiety and depression. Over 46% of the participants said that they saw their depression symptoms getting worse. Levels of anxiety. The big themes coming out of the, the data showing us those feelings of helplessness, where so much is out of our control and feeling quite hopeless. And that long-term projected feelings of hopelessness was really having a negative impact on people's mental health. So what kind of things were they the most frustrated about and what, what elicited the most anxiety? I think having such a lack of control over their day to day was impacting so many aspects of their life, whether having to figure out, I think in over 30% of the participants, work related stresses, you know, having to navigate, is my battery charged? Can I still work? Is there a network? Can I get to work? Um, so work related issues, traveling was also having to deal with robots that are out and taking longer and stressing about being late for meetings and appointments was a big thing. Um, I think for a lot of people just just navigating that day to day was a real problem. What we were finding that people were talking that they were having more levels of road rage in traffic because they were so much more frustrated or having more arguments with families or being snappy or short with their children, really just finding that their levels of agitation and anxiety were through the roof. Did security feature, so do people feel less secure because it's darker during night, there are no street lights at times, or because their security systems just don't work the way that they're supposed to work? You know, when you're sitting in darkness, your levels of anxiety, you're more hypervigilant, what was that sound, what is going on? So that definitely came through from the data. But that perceived fear of increased crime levels was definitely evident in more than 90% of the participants. But what was really interesting from the comments and the feedback that we received, it wasn't just perceived fear of crime or violence, but they were actually reporting real occurrences where people were sharing that during load shedding, they would have things that were stolen, um, robberies. Um, there was even a case of someone who'd said that someone had broken into their house during load shedding while they were sleeping. So these are not just perceived levels of crime or violence, but actual reports. So we are hearing more and more people actually sharing that, which tells us that it is a real fear and it's a real reality for so many people during load shedding. Were there indications of people, load shedding made people aware of the future of the country and they became a little bit insecure about in which direction are we heading? There is definitely an overall theme and over 96% of the respondents really had this fear or sense of helplessness and hopelessness for the future of the country. They were already starting to question, well, what's the hope for the country? What's going to happen with my children one day? Um, and that knock-on trickle effect of what this means overall as a state of the country was a really real fear for a lot of people as they were talking about it, uh, really making them feel like they didn't have much control, much hope as to where the country is going next. Did people give you any indication of what their psychological coping mechanisms are to cope with load shedding? Um, one of the concerning things that came out was the highest percentage, nearly 46% of people were actually using sleeping or napping during load shedding as a way to cope. 
And yet that could also be one of the signs and symptoms of depression or anxiety. We had people even sharing that when it was load shedding, they just wanted to go to sleep and wake up when load shedding was done. You know, those are some of the, the concerning comments that were coming from people using that as their go-to. Um, rest is definitely important, but not sleeping all the time when there's load shedding. I think that's what's key. Um, some of the things that people were doing is obviously trying to spend more family time together. Catching up on reading was also really important um, and trying to go outside when there was load shedding during the day. So it definitely forced people away. We expected more people to say that they were more on their screens or watching shows or downloadable shows, but it actually wasn't that much with only 18% of people saying that they would go to their screens. And I think a lot of that has to do with during load shedding, there's network problems, signal problems. Cassie, these responses that you got are obviously from middle class people who have access to the internet because it was an online survey. Have you guys at SADC looked at the impact of load shedding on poorer people in townships, rural areas? So we actually, with the survey, we were actually trying to engage a lot more with people in the township area as well. So we would print the survey and send our healthcare workers to the community and working kind of door to door, especially in our northern suburbs in, in, in Joburg. And it was also really interesting insights. Um, a lot of them load shedding or not having power was very common, even before load shedding became a schedule on an app. Um, they tended to have more resilience to it. Um, sometimes they were even saying it's more helpful now because there is a schedule, so you know when it's going to be switched on and switched off. Um, they had some more of the hacks of how to navigate alternative power sources. And often they would say they would just pause, stop whatever they were doing and wait till load shedding was over to then continue. So I think definitely for urban areas, they've been definitely more impacted negatively in having to navigate and adjust. But in more township areas where there's a lot more kinds of those issues, we're seeing that they seem to be coping much better, um, although they were more worried about crime and the trauma and, and during that time. The fear in more township areas was that this was going to increase more job losses and increase poverty. That was Cassie Chambers from the South African Depression and Anxiety Group. We've now heard just how tough load shedding makes life for many South Africans. So if psychologists are seeing more patients, what can we do to cope better? Joining us now via Zoom from KwaZulu-Natal is psychologist Tolin Hlangla Dlamini Ngoya. Welcome Toli and thanks very much for joining us. Do you in fact see more patients because of load shedding? Hi Mia, uh, thank you for having me. Um, oh, that's a great question and the answer is yes and no. Um, so yes, there is a lot of patients that will need to see us or me as an, an indiv individual psychologist, but um, because of load shedding, then they can't get to us. Because of load shedding, we can't have online sessions. So it impacts on service delivery in that sense. But as far as are there more people that need to see us, then it's a definite yes. And what type of issues do those patients that can get to you come with during load shedding? So um, whether people can get to us or not, um, the, the problems that they're sitting with, whether at home or bringing into our stations, as issues of anxiety, depression, a pile up of stresses, um, because you could think with, if you have, anxiety, you have anxiety because you're anxious, you don't know what is going to happen tomorrow, especially for ones that have uh, private businesses. You know, it's like, I don't know if I'll be open again, I'll be able to run my business for the next month or even for the next week. A lot of food industries have closed down. So there's a lot of anxiety around that, you know, well, how do I feed my family after this and, you know, where to from here? Tolly, I would imagine that your patients that you had prior to load shedding who already live with mental health conditions, that their conditions are perhaps exacerbated because of load shedding. There's a lot of stresses that we've been through as a country of recent. Imagine if you are a, a, a person that suffers from anxiety, you know, in any case, and now this is now something that triggers you all the time. If you are now, we're seeing your psychologist once a week, now you can't get a hold of them because of the network problems and because you can't get to them. It, it, it just makes matters worse. Earlier in our program, we also spoke to Sadak, who has found that general depression and anxiety levels have increased because of load shedding. What are the things that we can do to cope with this as best we can? 
So we need to just try and calm down and realize that there's things that we can control. So you take control of what you can control. And if what the things that you have no control of, you try and relieve that from your stresses to say, okay, um, let me rather look at the schedule. You know, how, when, when is the electricity going to go? So how do I plan my day better? So you need to try and, and have mechanisms that you cope with the fact that life is not going to be now as structured as you would want to be and you plan for the, for the unpredictable. So if, if, so you say, should something happen, then I have a flask of, you know, of hot water so I can have my cup of coffee because believe me or not, you know, that can be a trigger for mental health, just not having your cup of coffee in the morning or, or anything like that. This is a pandemic on its own. Try not to be clued on um, the negativity of it so because we find ourselves sitting and complaining about what this load shedding is doing about what this government is doing and every time you're sitting and soaking in the complaints and negativity you also lose hope you become helplessness and really i must warn that it can become fatal because once you lose hope then you you'll be most likely to have suicidal thoughts We've just come through another crisis, COVID-19, and we were also forced to cope with it during that time, and it was also unpredictable. Are there any coping strategies that we learned and used during that time that you can recommend that we also try and use during this load shedding crisis? South Africa is a country that's full of humor, you know, and I don't know where people think, you know, sometimes because we laugh, we, we make humor out of all the hardships that we go through. Then they, they think, oh, these people are not suffering. That's our coping mechanism. You know, that's what makes us resilient. That's what makes us wake up the following day and just think, OK, how do I tackle this? You know, so um, try and just in the midst of, of, of all this darkness, let's find some light and also try and um, and make use of this time to connect. Remember COVID-19 and the floods and all of those things that happened. It sort of separated us as families. We are still grieving while we were still trying to moan and grieve for our loved ones that we lost. I think what this has taught us with all these catastrophics is that you know, every minute is important. Every hour is important. So let's treasure that. Let's create memories. The South African Depression and Anxiety Group in their survey recently found that one of the coping mechanisms that South Africans say they use during load shedding is to sleep more. Is that a dangerous coping mechanism? Um, the danger is, remember when you're suffering from depression, it's either you have insomnia or hypersomnia, which means you are either not sleeping or sleeping too much. So if you're sleeping too much, then we don't know also whether you're sleeping into depression. And just one moment you will think now you need to get up and then you just don't know how anymore. So I would say let's keep pushing. Let's just find hope when when really it looks dark and in a literal sense that it's dark but let's find some light you know let's let's find things let's read if we can even if you use your 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 light your phone light read try and keep up also try and see for other means of surviving without electricity you know um we survived before i mean there was times when we never really as like us that comes from the rural areas we really didn't have electricity there are people who really don't have they are surviving. So we need to also uh, you know, find out how are they doing that and we, we try and adapt. We have to try and adapt. Tuli, thanks so much for making the time to speak to us today. Thank you for having me. That was psychologist Tolin Hlangla Dlamini Ngoya with some tips on how to cope with load shedding and mental health. If you're struggling to cope for whatever reason, SADAC is just a phone call away. There's a 24-hour toll-free emergency helpline. The number's on the screen. That's our show. Goodbye.